Welcome to Colab365. In this presentation we will talk about Azure Active Directory and we will talk about the five reasons that you have and you need to implement it today. So my name is Chris Panugakis, my company is System Plus. We do a lot of consulting and a lot of Microsoft official training around Europe. I am a Microsoft certified trainer since the year 2000. I'm also a Microsoft most valuable professional in enterprise mobility since 2008. Uh, I have a, some years experience as an IT consultant. I specialize in Microsoft Technologies, Windows Server, Exchange Server, System Center, Azure AD, Office 365, private and public clouds, and so on. I strongly suggest to subscribe to my blog, and you can see the URL in this slide, because I publish a lot of Azure Active Directory information there. In case you want to contact me, you can see my email address, my Twitter account, Facebook account, and LinkedIn account. So when we start talking about Azure Active Directory, usually the best thing that we need to do is to talk about the three different versions, the three, three different flavors of Active Directory that you can use today. And as you can see in this slide, the first version of Active Directory is the on-premises one. This is what we usually did all these years when we were installing domain controllers locally on-premises. Okay, so you just install your two domain controllers, you let them replicate, you create your user accounts, groups, Active Directory objects, and so on. The next thing that you can do if you want to extend your Active Directory environment is to create a domain controller by using an Azure VM. So practically, what do you need to do? You need to buy a new Azure virtual machine uh, with Windows Server 2016 or Windows Server 2008 or 2. You just install Active Directory, you promote this machine to be a domain controller, and you connect that secondary domain controller with your on-premises environment by using a side-to-side -side VPN. And as you can do this, you can see that these two domain controllers will replicate and it doesn't really matter where these two domain controllers are. Your on-premises domain controller will replicate all the objects to the domain controller to the Azure VM and as soon as you create, let's say, a new user account in this Azure VM, in that domain controller, this object will replicate back to the on-premises Active Directory. So practically, if you want to extend your Active Directory environment, you can use a VM up on Azure, you install Active Directory on that VM, and you connect that VM to your on-premises Active Directory environment. In some cases, this is really a good solution, but we know that VMs on Azure cost some money. So the next thing that you can do is to use the Azure Active Directory. What is the Azure Active Directory that already Microsoft has in place? Azure Active Directory is a database, an Active Directory database, multi-tenant by design, and it was created because Microsoft needed that Active Directory in order to support all these cloud products like Exchange Online, SharePoint Online, Skype for Business Online, the, all these products need Active Directory. So, because all these products need to actually find a database, this is the reason that Microsoft created the Azure Active Directory environment. The Azure Active Directory environment can be used by you to create objects, but the good thing is that it doesn't cost so much and you don't need to actually create an Azure VM. You just uh, create a new, you just buy a new subscription with Azure Active Directory and you can start using, using it uh, almost immediately. And this is something that many customers do not realize. Every time that you buy a new Office 365 subscription, you have an Azure Active Directory environment already uh, there and it, it works. So what are the options if you want to buy Azure Active Directory as a subscription? You just buy an Office 365 subscription, subscription and you know that you have Azure Active Directory in place or you just buy an Azure Active Directory subscription. 
And now that we've talked about Office 365, let's take a look at the possible scenarios that we have in order to use Azure Active Directory. As you can see, the first scenario is the cloud identity scenario. And this is because uh, we don't have any Azure, any Active Directory environment on premises. We've just created identities in the cloud. We don't need the integration to the on-premises Active Directory. Actually, this is for a small company that doesn't really need a domain controller on-premises. The only thing that this company needs is just uh, an Office 365 subscription. And remember, as soon as you buy an Office 365 subscription, you have uh, Azure Active Directory already in place. In this scenario, our users have just a single identity. So what we need to do, we need to log in to our Azure Active Directory portal or we need to log in to our Office 365 portal and create all the user accounts manually. But what if we have some on-premises identities, meaning we have a domain controller on-premises and somehow we don't want to recreate all these users up in Office 365. We need to find a way to synchronize all these users to the cloud. And this is the second scenario. The second scenario is called directory synchronization. Uh, by using this scenario, you have the option to synchronize all the identities that you have in your on-premises environment and automatically create user accounts and Azure Active Directory objects up in Office 365. The main benefit from this scenario is that your users will have a single identity. And in fact, we see that mistake happening a lot of times because we see that some companies buy a new Office 365 subscription and they do not synchronize their users. So practically, every user that is being created in the on-premises environment has a, another identity in Office 365 meaning that this new identity in Office 365 will, will have a new password, a different password maybe from the password that the user has in the on-premises environment. So we have a, a problem in managing all these identities because every user has a double identity, two identities, one identity on-premises and another identity in Office 365. That's why we strongly recommend to do the directory synchronization scenario if you have an on-premises identity infrastructure. If you have an on-premises domain controller, please just go and synchronize your identities to Office 365. And we will see how you can do that in a moment. The third scenario is to use Active Directory Federation services on-premises and this is why this scenario is called the Federated Identity Scenario. By using this scenario, you don't only synchronize your Active Directory objects to Office 365 as before, but you federate, you create a federation trust relationship with Microsoft. And the question is, what is the big difference between the directory synchronization scenario and the federated identity scenario. You need the federation identity scenario if you want to use the single sign-on technology. What is the single sign-on technology? As soon as you log on to your computer on-premises, you don't need to specify your username and password again when you connect to Office 365 or when you connect to Azure Active Directory. So remember, Cloud identities, if you have uh, no infrastructure on-premises. Directory synchronization, when you have a, an identity infrastructure on-premises and you want to synchronize all these user accounts to Office 365 and to Azure Active Directory, so you don't have to recreate the accounts in the cloud. And the federated identity scenario is when you want to have the single sign-on capability for all of your users. Let me show you a bit how it works when you have the single sign-on um, capability for your users. So what I'm going to do now is I will try to log on to my Azure Active Directory portal. So when you want to connect to the Azure portal, you have to type portal.azure.com and as you can see, since I have the single sign-on 
technology already in place, you can see that I'm not asked for a new username and password. I'm immediately logged in to the Azure folder. And the same thing will ca happen if you try to log on to the Office 365 portal, which is that, portal.office.com. You can see that I'm immediately connected to my email account. But now I have a small surprise for you. I can use the single sign-on scenario without using Federation Services. I don't actually use Federation Services. Why is that? What can I do? If, if Since I use Windows 10, I have the option to join my Windows 10 computer to Azure Active Directory. So practically, instead of joining your computer to the on-premises Active Directory environment, you have the option to join Windows 10 to Azure Active Directory. And as soon as you do that, you have the single sign-on scenario. Let me show you how it works. This is my Windows 10 computer and this is my Windows settings. If you search for Azure AD, you get that result, connect to work at school, and if you click on that one, you have the option to connect your computer to Azure Active Directory. You can see that I'm already connected. If you're not connected, you have to click on that one, and as soon as you get that prompt, you have to type your Azure Active Directory account, you click Next, Windows 10 will do everything that is needed in order to connect to Azure Active Directory and then you have the option to connect to Azure Active Directory as, uh, as usual. As you can imagine, I don't need to do that now because I'm already connected and this is why I can use the single sign-on technology every time I log on to Azure Active Directory and Office 365. So remember, in order to use the single sign-on scenario, you have to use Federation Services on-premises or join your Windows 10 computers to Azure Active Directory. So you will probably ask me, is it really easy to enable the directory synchronization? Yes, that's really easy. And actually, this is reason number one. You should use Azure AAD Connect to sync your on-premises Active Directory objects to Azure Active Directory. This is just a simple tool that you need to download and install in your premises environment. You just set it up with just four clicks, nothing really complex here. You can start with the default configuration and then you have to unique, you can change some additional options that are already included in the tool. And this is how you can do it by using the Azure Active Directory portal. You just log on to the portal, you go to Azure Active Directory, you can see that I don't have the synchronization enabled at this time, Azure AD Connect Sync is not enabled, and in order to check the status of the Active Directory synchronization, you have to click on the Azure AD Connect. So, sync status in notes is not enabled, the last sync was, has never run. You have to download the Microsoft Azure AD Connect. Uh, at this time, we're in this specific version. You can see that Microsoft, the Azure AD team, releases versions every now and then, so just make sure that you download the last one. So, you just download it, you install it, and as soon as you install it, you have to run the initial configuration. And this is what you get during the initial configuration. You should start with the Express settings. So you click on Use Express setting. Welcome to Azure AD Connect. You have to agree to the license terms and privacy notice. And then you go on and you configure the synchronization. The first thing that you need to do is to connect to Azure Active Directory. So obviously, as you can see here, you have to use your Azure Active Directory credentials, your username and password. And then 
when you go on, you have to connect you to your local Active Directory environment, to your on-premises Active Directory environment, so practically you have to type the username and the password of the domain administrator. And as you go on, we're ready to configure, you can start the synchronization process as soon as the configuration completes, so you're, you're good to go. Configuration is now completed and you can actually log on to the Azure or to the Office 365 portal to verify that user accounts from your local directory have been created. And this is because it's how the synchronization works. It will create objects in Azure Active Directory and these objects will be the exact copies of the objects that you have in your local on-premises environment. And the next thing that you probably want to check it's reason 1.1. You can see that there are a lot of reasons that you have to uh, keep in mind if you want to use Azure Active Directory. This is the Azure Active Directory Connect, Connect Health. This is, this is the tool that you can actually give you uh, the information about the health of the, of the directory synchronization. As you can see, I've already enabled my synchronization using Azure Active Directory Connect and just by using this part of the portal you have the option to check all the synchronizations errors that you get and additional reports and details about all these synchronization errors. This is a very very important tool that you can use because you immediately get the idea of the health of your directory synchronization. So let's say if you create some new on-premises users and you see that these users are not synchronized, now you have the option to find out why. And where is that Azure AD Connect Health? You can see that it's located down here, Health and Analytics. You just click on the Azure AD Connect Health and you get all the details that you need about the health of your directory synchronization and this is what you get. As you can see now my synchronization is unhealthy because I've stopped the synchronization before starting these demos. Okay, but you get the idea. And now you, we can move to reason number two. Reason number two is multi-factor authentication. So what is really multi-factor authentication? As you can see it's uh, an additional layer of protection for your identities and practically every time that you try to log on to the Azure portal or to the Office 365 portal instead of using just your username and password which can be stolen you have to use an additional factor of authentication like call to your phone you have to reply to that in order to log on or a text message to your phone and you have to use that code in the text message to log on a notification from a mobile application or even a verification code from a mobile application that you have already installed in Windows Phone, Android or even in your iPhone. So let's see how it works. As you can see I will try to log on to the Azure portal using my normal user account and as soon as I type my password it's not enough I need to use a verification code from my mobile application or I can use a different verification option let's check what other verification options we've got you have the option to uh, do a call to your landline phone or to your landline phone at home or to your a text to your mobile phone or you can ask for the Azure multi-factor authentication service to call you at this specific phone number so I will try to do this in order to show you how it works we will wait for a moment to reply to the phone so I can actually reply to my phone. Microsoft sign in verification system. Please press the pound key to finish your verification. If you did not initiate this verification, your sign in was successfully verified. Goodbye. As you can see, there is a pre recorded message that asks me to press the pound key in order to log on, and this is what I actually did. Okay, and this is 
how you can use multi-factor authentication. If you want to see how you can enable multi-factor authentication, you have to go to Azure Active Directory, Users and Groups, All Users, and you can see that you have the option to check the settings for the multi-factor authentication. So you just click on that one and you have a new window that comes up. And actually this window is part of the old portal, of the old Azure Active Directory portal. So you can see all the users that have multi-factor authentication enabled. That you can see that I'm the only user that I have multi-factor authentication enforced. And if you check the service settings, you have the option to specify what kind of verification options you want to use. A call to phone, a text message to a phone, a notification through a mobile application or a verification call from a mobile application. So as I said, please, please enable multi-factor authentication is a must if you want to protect your online identities. So this was reason two. Let's move on to reason three. Reason three is called conditional access policies and you can use the conditional access policies even for the Azure portal itself. As you can see from this slide, you have the option to specify a new conditional access policy and this new conditional access policy can be applied to users or groups can be applied to specific cloud applications that we already use on Azure Active Directory you have to specify the conditions and you have the options to specify access controls for example you can specify that only some specific users have the option to connect to Azure Active Directory services or to Office 365 services and these users have to use a specific device and these users have to connect from a specific IP address. And let's see a few more settings related to the condition ac access policies. Uh, something that the Azure Active Directory team uh, recently provided as an additional option is to be able to create conditional access policies even for the Azure portal itself. So let's take a look at this. First you have to connect to the Azure portal. You have to go to Azure Active Directory and click on conditional access. And as you can see we have some policies already created here. One of the policies that I've created, it's called the SharePoint Browser Limited Access Policy. If you take a look at this policy, you can see that this policy applies to just one user, that specific user. This policy is also applied and is related to the Office 360 point, 365 SharePoint Online. And I've created just one condition when you specify conditions, you have the option to specify sign-in risks. So, when you specify sign-in risks, you have to specify if the risk level is high, medium, low or no risk. You have the option to specify a device platform. So, I will uh, um, allow this user to connect using a mobile device, Android, iOS, Windows Phone, Windows or Mac OS. I have the option to specify the location that this user will be able to connect, any location, all trusted location or selected locations. Locations are uh, translated like IP addresses for example and this policy will be applied to the SharePoint Office 365 uh, application only if a user connects through the browser. So that user will not be able to connect by using a mobile app and a desktop client to SharePoint Office 365. And you have the option to specify some specific access controls. Take a look at this. You have the option to grant access to that application for that specific user, but we have the option to require multi-factor authentication for that user. The device has to be compliant, so we need somehow to control the device that the user will be used, and this can be done by using Intune, for example. We need that device to uh, be domain joint, and one more option, you can use the session controls 
limited experience with a cloud application. What is this session control? If you click on le learn more, you have a, an article here that will explain you what this is all about. As this article says, we have the option to create multiple conditions and controls as you can see, condition statements, which users will be able to connect to which cloud applications, how this user will be connect and all these conditions, sign in risks, device platforms, location as you can see, trusted IPs and client applications and well that's it for now. So let's go back and take a look at the next topic which is related to the Azure portal. As you can see from that slide, the cloud application that I've selected and I want to enforce and conditional access policy is the Microsoft Azure Management. And this application is actually the Azure portal itself. Uh, be very careful extra care when you configure the settings because it's very easy to lock out yourself out of the Azure portal in case you specify the wrong conditions here. So to summarize, remember that conditional access policies are used if you want to block or allow certain users to specific applications using specific devices from specific locations and you have the option to specify some additional settings, let's say like multi-factor authentication every time that the user tries to connect to that specific application. And one more thing that we can use uh, related to the security settings of Azure Active Directory, it's Reason 3.1 and this is called identity protections. Identity protection, sorry. As you can see, you have the option to specify a user risk policy. So when the system detects that there is a high risk, we have the option to allow access for that user and require multi-factor authentication or require a password change. So there is a clever mechanism underneath the entire uh, Azure Active Directory authentication that actually detects some uh, patterns that are related to malicious activity. So let's say if you specify the correct settings related to identity protection here and something bad happens and this uh, bad thing is related to a user account, probably your user will see something like this. The system detected a suspicious activity on your account, so you are asked to use multi-factor authentication, so you receive a code or you have to use your mobile application in order to enter the verification code, and as soon as you log on, the next step, depending of course on the conditional access policy that you've created, you are forced to update your password. And this is all because the system, the Azure Active Directory Identity System detected some suspicious activity. So use multi-factor authentication and then please update your password. This is the identity protection settings that you can use. If you navigate to the Azure Active Directory portal, you have the option to check about risky sign-ins as you can see here. So this is where you actually get all the different uh, details about risk levels. For example, if the system detects that you uh, try to log on uh, from a different country than your usual country, it will uh, raise a risk level and you have the option to check the users that are fl flagged for risk. As you can see here, my admin one account is a user that is flagged for risk. The risk level is low. And if you check the settings here, you can see that this user will need to use multi-factor authentication here. So actually what you can do for this user, you can immediately reset the password or if you go back, you can check that user and you can apply a user risk policy for automatic mitigation. So you can actually create a user risk remediation policy that will be applied to that user and with some specific conditions that you specify. 
and you can actually select that the risk level so if the risk level is high you should let's save that one select that one and save it if the use the user risk level is high you can specify a specific control for that user so allow access for the user but require a password change okay or you can simply just block access to that specific user and these are all the different settings related to security and how Azure Active Directory tries to protect your online identities and now we can move to reason number four reason number four is related to Azure Active Directory privileged identity management and approval workflows so let's say we have some users and we need to give to these users uh, admin access to the uh, Azure portal just for a limited amount of time because probably they need to perform some admin tasks by using Azure AD PIM privileged access management you can specify the exact time the exact duration as you can see in this slide I've specified for that specific user admin 2 a maximum uh, duration of 24 hours so this user will be an administrator will have admin access to the Azure portal just for 24 hours as soon as I enable the admin access for that user this user will get a notification and something new that we have here we have the option to create an approval workflow so uh, now it's possible for that user to request the admin access so to actually request to activate the global administrator role the global administrator will get a, a message and it will approve that request for that user as you can see let me go back the user will have to request activation so practically the user will request the role activation to be a global administrator by specifying a reason and as you can see that user says okay I would like to be an admin the administrator will get a message and will approve the request the notification that the original user will get is that the activation request is pending approval so as soon as you as the administrator you receive the request you have the option to approve that request uh, but as we said it will be valid for just 24 hours so as soon as you approve the request you have to type the actual approve reason and that's it so in order to enable Azure Active Directory privileged identity management you have to go to the Azure portal you have to go to more services and you have to search for the privileged identity so as you can see this is the Azure ID privileged, ID, privileged identity management you click on that one and then you can see that you have the option to approve requests or check your requests if you've created some requests before so if you want to approve some requests you have to go here and see if you have some approval requests for some other users in order to uh, make them to be administrators for the Azure portal one more thing that you can do and it's really important you can check about the different Azure Active Directory directory roles that you have in your environment as you can see you have some active role assignments a security administrator that is permanently assigned a global administrator and a privileged uh, role administrator if you click on that wizard here you have the option first to discover privileged roles you can see that we have global administrators security administrators and privileged role administrators if you click on the global administrator role you can see which are the users that have this exact role so I have three global administrators admin one my user account and one more system plus administrator take a look at this this is these are permanent roles and this is eligible so my system plus administrator is not really a global administrator is a global administrator that he actually got 
the role because of a privilege identity management request. And now we can move to our last reason to implement Active Directory today and this is something really really cool, it's called the Azure Active Directory Application Proxy. So I now have a question for you guys. Uh, you already know that you have some web applications on premises, meaning that these applications run on locally installed web servers. You have your Active Directory on-premises environment already in place and you have some users that will try to connect to these web applications. But as you already know, today we have a lot of other devices, mobile devices, tablets, androids, phones, whatever, and these devices will need to connect to these web applications from the external world by using the Internet. So how you can actually give access to th these users and these devices when these devices are not located uh, in your company's network? One way to do this is to give the exact same access to these web applications, meaning that it doesn't matter uh, which platform or what device you use, by using Forefront Unified Access Gateway or TMG, this is something that we used to do in the past so we could actually publish these web applications to the internet and all these devices should be able to connect to these web applications or you could use the web application proxy service with Active Directory Federation services. There was another way to do it. Both these ways uh, needed a lot of effort and a lot of on-premises infrastructure, uh, certificates, uh, security settings, firewall settings, a lot of things to configure them. Fortunately, now it's a lot easier if you use the Azure Active Directory application proxy service. So, since we know that we use Azure Active Directory and we've already enabled the directory synchronization, as you can see, all the user accounts that I have in my on-premises Active Directory environment are synchronized to Azure Active Directory. So, practically I have the exact same identities in the cloud. What can I do? When you configure the Azure AD application proxy, you have you can use it as an intermediate, as a proxy actually, to give access to these web applications to all these external users and I don't really care about the devices that these users will use. So this is really a, a cool feature and this is how it works. First you have to deploy connectors on your network so actually you have to install the connector on every web server that runs this web application in your on-premises environment. The connector is just a small piece of, not, you know, of software that you can download it and install it locally on your web servers. You have the option to deploy multiple connectors for redundancy and scale because every connector can handle some thousands of connections but maybe you have more traffic and you need uh, multiple connectors. So you just download the connectors, you install them in the uh, web servers where you have all these web applications. These connectors will connect automatically to the application proxy service in Azure Active Directory and you can use one more connector. The second connector will connect again to the exact same uh, Azure Active Directory application proxy service and this is done automatically. And as soon as the connector is connected to the service you have a URL that you have to share with your users. As you can see, every web application will have a single URL generated. So practically, you can use a custom URL or you can use the automatically generated URL by Office 65 and Azure Active Directory. Let's say we have an application called Sales. The valid URL, if an external user wants to connect to this application, will be sales.contoso.msapproxy.net. But you can customize that URL so you can actually instruct all your users to connect to HTTPS salescontoso.com. As soon as these users 
try to connect to that URL, they actually connect to the Azure Active Directory application proxy service and then they are automatically redirected to the web application that you have on premises. As simple as this. The beauty about the Azure Active Directory application proxy service is that you don't need to open uh, ports on your firewalls. It's the connector that does the whole thing. The connector creates a uh, out going connections to the application proxy service and actually connects the web applications with um, the external users. So let's take a look at how this works and how you can configure it before doing the re By navigating to the Azure Active Directory portal you have an option here that says application proxy so you have to click on that one and as you can see you have the option to download the connector. This is this small piece of software that will be used to connect to the application proxy service. So you download it and you install it on your web servers and then you have to enable the application proxy. So enable the application proxy service will allow you to provide remote access to your on-premises applications. Okay, so I'm going to enable that one it will take some seconds and now it's already enabled and the next thing that you need to do is to create a new connector group so you create a new group of connectors in case you want to use multiple connectors and then if you don't need a connector group you have to uh, install the connector in your web service and do the entire configuration by using uh, the connector configuration. As you can see here, you have to click on this setting here to specify what are the on-premises applications that you need to publish using the uh, Azure AD application proxy service. So, you can use some applications that you already have or you can create a new application. This application it's an on-premises application. You have to connect on that setting here. You have to give a name to that application. So let's call it Sales Web App. And you have to specify the internal URL of that application, the actual URL that your users use when they connect from the on-premises environment. So this application needs HTTP Sales. As you can see, Azure Active Directory application proxy service creates automatically a URL, an external URL. You can customize this URL if you want. In case you have some domain names already verified with Azure Active Directory. Since I already verified my systemplus.gr domain, take a look at this. You can customize the external URL and make it something simple like this. So every time that a user tries to connect to HTTPS sales.systemplus.cr, it will connect to that internal application by using the connector. One more thing that you need to specify is how the, uh, the pre-authentication will be made. So if you have synchronized your user accounts with Azure Active Directory, you can authenticate the users by using Azure Active Directory or you can pass through. What is the meaning of this pass-through? Means that your users will not be, auth be authenticated by using Azure Active Directory, but you have to do the authentication somehow using that web application. Okay, and that's it. You just add the application and then you have to specify, you have to create the connectors. The next step is to specify the properties of that new web application you've created. You can see that you can even change the logo of that application. You can specify which users and which groups will have access to that application by, the, uh, by adding a user or a group. And you can enable if you want the single sign-on. Imagine how f uh, beautiful is this. Even if your web application doesn't use single sign-on, you can use single sign-on by using Azure Active Directory. And the final step will be to check the connector. You can see that we have 
a new connector here and one application is assigned to this connector group. Please do not forget to click here to download the connector so this connector could be assigned correctly to that specific application. So I strongly suggest that you try this out. It's one of the really cool features of Azure Active Directory. So that's it. Let's check uh, what we've talked about during this presentation. We've talked about the Azure AD Connect in the Azure AD Connect Health to synchronize your on-premises Active Directory objects to your, the Azure Active Directory uh, service. We've talked about multi-factor authentication. It's something really, really recommended to do it in order to protect your online identities. We talked about conditional access policies that you can use to actually manage which user and under which conditions uh, this user will be able to access the uh, Azure Active Directory and services and Office 365 services. We've talked about the Azure Active Directory Privilege Identity Management where you can actually give admin access for a very limited period of time to some users. And we've talked about the Azure Active Directory Application Proxy, something really cool that you should try if you want to publish your web applications easily to external users, no matter what device these users are using. So thanks for watching. Uh, stay tuned for some more great sessions that will follow. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.